All right, so for number five, we have the number of sick days taken by each employee in a company during a year, and it was recorded. The data is organized into a box and whisker diagram as shown below this guy right there. So for part A, the entirety of part A, they ask us for minimum, lower quartile, and median in terms of sick days. So part A is really asking you, like, do you know how to read a uh, box and whisker diagram? And so a very, very intuitively, or like, quick review of a box and whisker diagram is that this first stick here is going to be your minimum. This guy here is going to be Q1. This guy here is going to be Q2. And this guy here is going to be Q3. And of course, this guy here is going to be my maximum. ¿cierto? Let's remember that my Q2 is the same as my median. So whatever cuts through the middle here is going to be my median. Para bien, para so that's minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and maximum. Let's also remember that since um, that from the minimum to Q1, ¿cierto? this guy here is going to be 25% of my data. Um, from Q1 to Q2 is another 25%. And from Q2 to Q3 is another 25%. And from Q3 to maximum is my remaining 25%. See? So that is like a representation of percentages in terms of Q1, Q2, and all that stuff. Yapo. So for part five part a part i we need the minimum number of sick days during the taken during the year we said that the minimum is the first guy shown here ¿cierto? and so let's try to find out how much that value is if this is five and this is zero then it has to be proportional right so you take a moment you count the squares you see if it works or not you're going to find out that um, every two squares is one unit and so this is four this is three this is two this is one, and of course we have zero. ¿cierto? So um, this guy here is going to be two days. For the lower quartile, lower is going to make reference to Q1. The higher quartile is going to make reference to Q3. A lot of people mistake this saying a uh, higher quartile is Q2 because it's right after Q1. That is a mistake. Let's remember that Q2 is defined as my median, ¿cierto? which they actually ask us for it later down the road. So let's find Q1. ¿cierto? If this guy here is five, then this guy here is six. And this guy here is lined up with my Q1. So this guy here, the part double I, ¿cierto? part double I is going to be six days. Finally, for the median, it's right at Q2. We know that this has to be seven. And of course, this has to be eight. See? So Q2 or median, same thing, has to be eight days. All right, that is the entirety of part A. If I went a little too fast, I have other videos that go a little bit slower. You can check them out. Later, we have Paul. Paulie. My guy Paulie claims that this box and whisker dagger can be used to infer that the percentage of employees who took fewer than six days, so fewer than six days is from here to here, because that is where my six is, um, is smaller than the percentage of employees who took more than 11 sick days. So 11. Where is 11? All right, we know where six is. And so six is from Q1 until, well, minimum, ¿cierto? Let's see where 11 is. And so if we keep going counting these numbers, if here we have eight, here we have nine, here we have 10. Ah, here we have 11. What's going on over here? So this 11 is lined up with Q3. So Q3 to over there is going to be maximum, ¿cierto? And so what Polly is telling me is that this, um, like this here, is less days than this here. That is what Polly is trying to tell you. And so what a lot of people would think here is, okay, the line on the left is clearly smaller than the line on the right. Polly is right. ¿Cierto? But hey, this is where, you know, like the intuition of a box and whisker diagram kind of like kicks in. Let's remember that we were talking about percentages earlier. ¿Cierto? And so from, as I said way, way back then, a minimum to Q1 is 25%. Q1 to Q2 is 25%. Q2 to Q3 is 25%. Q3 to the maximum is also 25%. And so actually, the amount of sick days in both of these ends ¿cierto? is equal to each other. The amount of days is equal. What is not equal and why they're drawn differently is that from minimum to Q1, they are much more concentrated, right? And so there's like a lot, for example, ¿cierto? there's a lot, a lot of people that called in for two, three, or four sick days, ¿cierto? It's like 
it's very concentrated. A lot of twos, a lot of threes, a lot of fours. But over here, there's much more spread. Some people called in 10, others called for, say, 17. And so, boom, there's a lot more spread. The way I draw it is much bigger than my other one. ¿cierto? And so the fact that there is a big distance here is really talking about my spread of my data in that area. ¿cierto? In that part of my data, in the upper percentiles from 75 percentile to the 100th percentile. The spread down here is much lower. See, But that does not mean that there are less sick days. One thing is spread, another thing is amount. The amount is the same because they are both 25%. Aha, interesting. And so we would say that, hey, Polly, sorry, homie, but you're kind of wrong. You are wrong because both min to Q1 and Q3 to max are 25%. See? That is one way to answer. There's a couple ways, but I think that's the most intuitive one. That is part five, part B, and the whole exercise, actually.